the elements and principles of design, the tools of art and how to use them. Elements of design are referred to as the tools used to create a balanced composition. Different sources will include other elements, but these are the terms we'll primarily use in this course. Lines have direction. They can be vertical, horizontal, diagonal, straight, or curved. Lines have weight. They may be thick, thin, bold, or light. Lines have frequency. They may be dotted, dashed, or full. This vessel utilizes line in a variety of ways. The vertical lines creating the tree trunks are dark and more prominent than others, creating bold lines. The line thickness and placement are asymmetrical. As the tree trunks vanish into the background, they lose their crispness and become thin, soft, and delicate. The subject matter the lines represent are trees, which are inherently organic, but the lines themselves subtly undulate as trees would, making the line quality organic rather than rigid, for example. In this piece, the lines of the floral decoration are bold and curved in comparison to the softer image of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Again, since the lines are used to define a natural object such as vines and flowers, the line quality is considered to be organic. An inferred line is one that is not there physically, but we can identify an edge despite the lack of one. An inferred line is present on the side of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s face. While the definition has been lost because the contrast is low, we still can identify the edge of his face. The lines present in the form itself creates an octagonal form, creating symmetrical lines, both in the cup and the foot. While the glaze softens the angularity of the form, it can still be considered rigid due to our associations with geometric forms and hard lines. The prevailing direction of the lines in this piece is vertical, or vertical. In this piece, the line direction can be described as radial as the lines move out from a central point. In the thickness of the edges creates a bold, sharp, and rigid lines. The lines of the surface decoration are linear in comparison to the curved form of the handle. The relationship between the handle and the surface lines are the color shared between them and the softness of the handle itself and the surface lines as they are arced at the top and bottom of each one. These are contrasted by thin, dark, curved lines and unified by a single vertical straight line of the same color and quality. Shape generally refers to two-dimensional elements. Geometric shapes include circles, squares, ovals, triangles, hexagons. Organic shapes are all other forms that are not geometric. The majority of shapes depicted in this painting are organic. Even the shapes that appear more geometric are not symmetrical and merely reference rec rectangles and triangles. The yellow curved lines are meant to suggest a three-dimensional form without much use of shading, a traditional way of representing a 3D form with 2D media. While this appears to be a flat composition, it is actually a bowl. You will see its profile in a future slide. That said, it is easy to see shapes that we can easily reference. Squares, a circle, and grids are identified readily. Upon a quick glance, one might think this is symmetric, but after viewing more closely, the design is not mirrored in a new direction. Form generally refers to three-dimensional elements. Geometric forms include cubes, spheres, cones, cylinders, etc. Organic forms are all other kinds of forms that are not geometric. Circling back to this image, at a quick glance, it appears two-dimensional. Upon full view, we can observe the form which shares many of the same descriptors employed under the element of shape. The translation of square, circle, and triangle into cube, sphere, and conical don't exactly fit either. As such, it is fine to utilize the same descriptors, i.e. square, circle, and triangle, as long as it is clear that it is in reference to a form and not a shape. The form of this place is primarily round or circular, yet asymmetrical and organic. There are components of this piece that are geometric. The form of the lid suggests six sides, but when looking at the form, when looking at the form of the vessel, everything under the lid, it appears smooth with the pattern providing an optical illusion that it also has six sides. Color, the hue is the name of the color. So red, blue, yellow, purple, etc. Value is the lightness or darkness of a color. How much black or white has been introduced into the color. Intensity is the saturation or opacity of a color. Temperature is warm or cool. These are often filters on phone apps. The cup on the left employs warm colors, tan, brown, and electric blue, while the cup on the right utilizes a cooler spectrum. The plate on the left util utilizes a transparent or clear glaze over a translucent color application. When viewed closely, you can see brush strokes and shading through various degrees of saturation of color. The cup on the right is opaque. There is no range of saturation present. The artist employs the use of contrasting warm and cool color palettes in order to magnify each. The warm reds and browns and matte clay 
is juxtaposed by the cool blue and green and yellow and stripes. The warm red stripes provide continuity between the two contrasting elements. Texture refers to the physical feel and or visual appearance related to the sensation of touch. Examples of words associated with texture are smooth, rough, silky, furry, etc. The black and brown glazed areas of the bowls are smooth, while the white or crackled areas are rough or broken. This piece is ribbed due to the fabrication, but also to replicate a coiled snake. The snake itself is bumpy. The texture of this piece is exaggerated in comparison to that of a real snake. The texture of the bottle on the left is largely smooth, when in exception to the knob, which is the texture of the piece. Is it jagged or smooth? While there are sharp zigzag lines, those are in the form. The glaze covers the form. The glaze that covers the form is smooth and thick, actually softening those edges. What is your gut reaction to this piece? Will Gompertz, former director at Tate Modern, writes of the sculpture, the sexual connotations of object, le déjeuner en fruyeur, are obvious. Drinking from the furry cup is a sexual, explicit sexual reference, but there is much more to it than a saucy joke. The image of a fur-lined cup and spoon would not be out of place in the first chapter of any book about anxiety and nightmares in which any pretense of being in control is subverted by sinister happenings. In this instance, a cup and spoon has grown hair, turning objects from which one should derive relaxation and pleasure into something aggressive, unpleasant, and faintly disgusting. It has connotations of bourgeoisie guilt for wasting time gossiping in cafes and mistreating beautiful animals. The fur is from a Chinese gazelle. It is also an object designed to engender madness. Two incompatible materials have been brought together to create one troubling vessel. Fur is pleasing to touch, but horrible when you put it in your mouth. You want to drink from the cup and eat with the spoon. That is their purpose. But the sensation of the fur is too repulsive. It's a maddening cycle. This piece was made in 1936. Space refers to the area around, within, or between objects or images. Often referred to as positive or negative space, positive space is the physical space something occupies, while negative space is the space around, within, or between them. The swirling design of the lines on the tray are repeated in the positive form in the negative space of the handles. In this piece, the negative space between the positive images of the birds creates an interesting abstract shape. In this piece, the negative space created by the handle mimics the positive shape of the belly of the pitcher. Principles, how to use the tools. Pattern, the regular arrangement of alternated or repeated elements, shapes, lines, colors, for example, or motifs. Patterns have direction. They can be vertical, horizontal, diagonal, radial, or they can be organic. Patterns can be symmetrical or asymmetrical. Patterns have frequency, the degree to which they are repeated and or the amount of space between elements of the pattern. The overarching pattern direction of this piece is diagonal, which emphasizes both the weight, the height, width, and curvature of the vessel. It may not appear that the, that the pattern is asymmetrical. It may appear that the pattern is symmetrical, but it is not. The distance between the boulder patterns is relatively even, but not exact. The frequency of the pattern is high. It is repeated extensively over the majority of the surface of the piece. This piece employs many different patterns. There are patterns that are part of form and patterns that are on the surface only. The surface patterns are opaque. The patterns within the form are covered with a translucent glaze. The patterns within the form are symmetrical and some are asymmetrical. Some are bold and some are subtle. Some have high frequency and some have low frequency. Some make visible the method of construction while others disguise them. This piece engages pattern in a subtle way. The primary direction of the pattern is vertical and executed by the orange brown lines that presumably run from the neck of the vessel to the foot. Those lines are accentuated by the green or sage glaze that follows the orange brown lines, but at an uneven length. Both elements accentuate the verticality of the vessel. Contrast refers to the juxtaposition of different elements of design to highlight their differences and or create visual interest or a focal point. Contrast is employed in this piece in various ways. The bold red stripes juxtapose the spotty or mottled gray and white lid and base. The geometric or regular pattern of the alternating white and red and white stripes juxtapose the random or organic pattern of the gray and white areas. Contrast is employed in this piece via the glaze and form. The smooth black glaze is juxtaposed by the crackled white glaze. In this particular view of the composition, the rims of the bowls create the impression of flattened circles. The compressed spheres, spheres can be perceived as 3D mutations of the 2D ovular forms. 
This piece juxtaposes warm and cool colors to strengthen the visual effect of, uh, upon the other. The contrast of the warm color of the clay body and the cool colors of the pattern are linked by the red lines in the pattern. The cool colors employed by the glaze pattern offsets the warm neutral color of the clay body. Emphasis refers to the attention or importance given to one part of a work of art. Emphasis can be achieved through placement, contrast, color, size, repetition, visual weight, etc. Emphasis can be re referenced as primary or secondary. While the platter itself is rather large, the dark, dark dot off the center of the plate commands our attention due to its contrast with the rest of the platter. The shape of a circle is repeated three times. The dot is a circle, the interior of the platter creates a circle, and the rim of the platter is an implied circle. The repeated use of the circle provides unity. While the all over pattern of this piece may not provide a single focal area, it does emphasize the bulbous shape of the vessel. In this piece, the surface design of the flowers is emphasized by the form of the bowl, and the form of the bowl is emphasized by the surface design simultaneously. The surface design is accentuated by the alteration of the rim to mimic the flowers as well as a pinched alteration to mimic the shape of the leaves. Balance is achieved when the elements of design are arranged to create the impression of equality in weight and or importance. Balance is not a matter of mere symmetry as in a scale measuring weight. A well-balanced composition will have a focal point that is complemented by elements that draw the viewer's eye around the piece. In this piece, the focal point is the dark ovoid shape in the center of the bowl. In contrast, the area surrounding it is light in color and larger in shape. The shape of the ovoid area is repeated in the shape of the rim of the bowl, and the raised area that surrounds the dark ovoid center is repeated in the areas of the bowl rim that appear thicker. The viewer's eye is carried from the dark ovoid area to the articulated rim of the bowl around the edge and back to the center. In this piece, balance is achieved between the push and pull of the extreme close-up of the foreground imagery and the vastness of the background. The border and the darker areas of the imagery are united in their color, which is exposed clay body. The composition is also unified in the illustration technique. Hash marks, dots, and bold lines are employed throughout the imagery. The border provides a frame to the pictorial space. The horizon line carries the eye from left to right, and the detail of the astronaut provides a clear focal point. In this piece, balance is achieved by the subtle juxtaposition used in many of the decisions made by the maker. At first glance, the viewer may not see how dynamic this piece is. Upon a closer look, the pattern is soft and organic, as well as geometric and regular. The body is curved and bulbous, while the lid is angular and squat. The glaze is soft, but cool in tone. Scale or proportion refers to the relationship between objects in size and or number and can include the relation between parts of a whole. Unity refers to when all parts of a composition or series of compositions work together to be seen as a whole. Scale is displayed in this piece through four different sizes of circles with the exception of the smallest and seem to increase at the same rate. The shape of the circle is magnified by the use of the spiral, which simultaneously keeps the viewer's eye moving throughout the piece and to each circle in the design. The repetition of the circle shape unifies the surface to the form. The gray, brown, and orange tan circles and the offset spiral of the surface are framed by the same shape inherent in the form of a bowl, a circle. Here again, scale is represented in this piece through the surface design and overall form of the vase. The tall ovoid shape of the vessel is emphasized by the surface design, which, while not identical, resembles a smaller version of the shape of the vessel. Contrast is utilized to provide visual interest, and the vertical line texture of the design elongates the height of the vessel. The dots or circles unify the exposed clay of the vase with the surface design imposed upon it. Scale in this piece is represented through the foreground and background of the pictorial space, which creates a dynamic narrative. While none of the imagery is repeated in a traditional sense, one could argue that the theme of neighborhood or childhood is carried from the vessel to the cup. It may seem far-fetched to extrapolate a narrative from this set, but by looking more closely at the details and considering that the title of the piece, Liquor Decanter Set for One, I am inclined to argue that this set might illustrate a troubled childhood that is culminated in self-medication and or coping through alcohol use. The house appears normal, but the lines of the windows are somewhat skewed. From the viewer's perspective, there is no vegetation which could represent a lack of which could re represent a lack of growth or inability to grow beyond a certain life event. The cup is separate, indicating an individual, and the bike is locked up, perhaps indicating that it is not safe at home. 
Harmony refers to the successful, successful cohesion of all elements as they contribute to a composition. Harmony is the arrangement of elements to give the viewer a feeling that all parts of a piece form a whole. There is repetition in the line quality of the surface design and the three-dimensional representation of the hand. Both are somewhat flimsy, but the color provides a sense of strength. The colors of the fingernails are repeated in the surface design. Finally, the action of the hand holding the cup with a finger serving as a handle links to the other in a physical and metaphorical way. Here again, there is significant consideration of the marriage between the two and three dimensional elements of this piece. The unglazed vertical stripes on the vessel are repeated in three dimensional, in the three dimensional knob, which also mimics a punctuation or ending to the piece. The red curved lines relate to the cylindrical form as if viewing the form from a bird's eye view. The horizontal red band around the middle literally wraps itself around the cylinder and the thin vertical red stripe relates to the unglazed brown stripes. The architectural details toward the bottom of the piece provide a three-dimensional version of the brown stripes, accentuated by what appears to be black smeared into the joints. This treatment is then repeated on the edge of the lid much more subtly, but identifiable as a mechanism to unify the, event, the elements. In this piece, the form resembles a human torso through the reference of a torso. <laughs> the imagery of gazing faces could be interpreted as human nature or a human flaw to stare at, what we find beautiful and unnerving. Again, it may seem far-fetched to read into what could be viewed as just a bottle to incorporate a deeper narrative, but the connection between the physical form of this piece and the deliberate depiction of staring eyes is a familiar exercise to all humans for better or worse. Rhythm and movement are defined by elements to direct the eye through a composition, generally organized to lead the eye to a focal area. In this piece, the focal point is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., which is dictated by a couple of things. The first is our collective understanding of portrait style imagery. When we see a picture like this, it gives the impression of professionalism and status. This becomes the focal point of the composition. Second, the floral imagery literally draws the eyes, the viewer's eyes to Dr. King's, the trajectory of the blue tail of the bird and the center of the flower on the opposite side of his face draw our attention to his eyes. And ultimately, one could argue that the vibrancy of the flowers and the sepia tone of Dr. King indicate memoriam rather than a mere portrait. Interestingly, the cup seems to have little relationship with the surface decoration. How is this version different? The focal point cannot be ignored. The mug is simply a vehicle for the imagery, but one could argue that the top of the handle guides the viewer's eye to Dr. Kin's face. Now for something fun. Black, then white. I'm going to say I'll probably cut the minutes out. For each frame, those pictures have to be the same to register as static. Good. Yeah. Yeah. In this piece, despite the horizontal band at the bottom of the vessel, the pillar's design strengthens the vertical orientation of the work. Symmetry can be used to create emphasis and balance and, used as, and is used in pattern. Symmetry of a single element that has a mirror image on at least one axis. There are, there are three types of symmetry, reflection, rotational, and translational. Asymmetry has no mirror image. 
This piece utilizes all forms of symmetry. It is balanced because of its symmetry, but also because of the many ways juxtaposition is used. The shiny glaze shiny glazed surface is contrasted by clay edges, as well as our common knowledge of a delicate butterfly contrasted with this representation in clay, which appears to be thick and heavy. The biggest takeaway is that a well-balanced composition is not achieved by one element or principle. This piece is completely asymmetrical. There is an obvious relationship between the two-dimensional imagery and the three-dimensional form, which ultimately references the whimsy of the two-dimensional design. There's a comfortable tension between the softer colors utilized in the surface design and the bold black utilized to accentuate the contours of the three-dimensional form. In closing, while the terms associated with the elements and principles of design may be familiar, the use of them in creating a well-balanced and successful artwork are nuanced and depend on the interconnectedness between form, surface, and narrative.